2018, we became very excited because our preferred uh, type of solution for pricing carbon uh, was actually uh, modelled and costed by the University of New South Wales. Uh, they, they're calling it their uh, Australian Climate Dividend Plan, ACDP. And uh, the title of this uh, presentation is a Robin Hood carbon tax question mark because that's one of the uh, kind of uh, way this uh, carbon ta this uh, policy has been uh, uh, categorised. So putting it in context, uh, the University of New South Wales uh, has what they call their grand challenges, addressing the biggest issues facing community, uh, in fa facing humanity. So uh, they're trying to focus what their uh, researchers are doing in the in, in the university, and how they can trip, can uh, generate concrete concrete solutions to uh, uh, manage managing the biggest challenges in the world today. The three challenges they put priority on is uh, climate change, refugees, and inequality. So what we're dealing with, uh, the two people we've, we've uh, had most to do with associated with this plan is uh, Professor Richard Holden and Pref Professor Ros Rosalind Dixon. So I just want to uh, give some uh, references to those there. So climate change uh, and inequality are both addressed by uh, this uh, plan that uh, they put together. So climate change is obviously the biggest uh, moral challenge for the world today. So all of us uh, have an effect and contribute to uh, uh, kind of uh, greenhouse gases and uh, the damage it causes to the environment and the damage to the health, safety and, uh, and prosperity of future generations. So the uh, risks from, from global warming and the urgency for action is now very well understood, especially with the IPCC report that's just come out and some of the fantastic research that's been, done, do, uh, been going on over the last few years. So, uh, and the linking between climate change and inequality. So climate change is recognised as a uh, driver for inequality. People who have the least wealth and contribute the least to the climate change problem uh, are tending and will tend to be paying the highest price, especially future generations uh, that, that will be impacted. Okay, a little, little bit of more background. Australia has agreed to uh, emission reductions of uh, 26 to 28 per cent by 2030, but the graph below shows that our actual performance is quite poor. So we made some uh, big leap, uh, leap forwards, uh, may, maybe uh, more on paper than anything else, uh, kind of uh, starting in 2008, but for the last five years, our emissions have actually been uh, increasing, which is a major concern because uh, to reach our Paris targets, they've actually got to decrease. And it's well recognised that the 26% to 28% reductions in emissions is only just a starting point. That uh, there's uh, the challenge is much bigger than that, and uh, and the 26 and 28% hardly kind of touches the surface of what's required. So the Australian uh, Climate Dividend Plan. So New South Wales believes that uh, this sort of plan will achieve us, allow us to easily achieve our our uh, Paris targets, but at the same time uh, uh, maintain our energy reliability and affordability, and especially affordability for the low income Australians. So, uh, uh, and the uh, Australia Climate Dividend Plan is extremely similar to uh, 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 Citizens Climate Lobby preferred solution, which is our uh, carbon fee and dividend policy. So I'm going to go through some of the differences. So the term, terminology Robin, Robin Hood carbon tax came from uh, Ross uh, Grittens from the Sydney Morning Herald. And it's really focusing on uh, the uh, ability for, for this approach to reduce inequality 
uh, the, the focus, yeah, the, the inference is taking from the rich and giving to the poor. It's not quite that simple, but uh, it's a one, one way to think about uh, what this plan does. Just going into a little bit more detail about uh, what the Australian Climate Dividend Plan does, just a few technical details. So it's a market-based approach applying uh, carbon tax to fossil fuels as they enter the market, which is a, a very efficient way to do it. It uses the social cost of emissions of about $50 per tonne of carbon dioxide or equivalent. And uh, it does that by uh, our, while we're uh, retaining reliability and affordability of energy. So that's its main focus. So this tax would re be returned evenly to every voting age Australian citizen, uh, which will be around uh, $1,300 per year. So a large sum of money. Uh, it suggests, uh, the plan suggests phasing in, uh, starting at a $20 per tonne, so which wouldn't have too much impact, and increasing in on uh, uh, $5 per tonne a year. So uh, a, a slow phase in, but over about six years. Uh, the border adjustments would be applied, uh, so Australian and overseas industries would not be disadvantaged. So I'll go through in a little bit more detail on that later. So also existing subsidies on renewables and similar measures would be removed to repla and, and replaced by the carbon tax. So some of the financial affordability comes from removing existing uh, uh, subsidies and replacing it with the uh, carbon tax. So for people who haven't really uh, uh, got a, a clear view of what a, a carbon fee and dividend or an Australian Climate Dividend Plan will do, this is a, a very simplified version, three-step version of what it does. So it places a fee or, or tax on fossil fuels as they come into the, uh, into the market, which is at, at the mine, as the coal comes out the mine, as the gas comes out of the well, or as the uh, oil enters our ports, a uh, fee is placed on those. All the revenue that's collected on stage two it's distributed to voting, voting age Australians. So uh, a carbon fee and dividend does it slightly differently, but uh, uh, effectively all the money goes back to Australians equally. And the border adjustments, uh, adjustments are made uh, depending on what uh, equivalent carbon pricing systems other countries have. So, uh, Imports and exports are adjusted so that uh, no, no overseas company or, or Australian company is majorly disadvantaged by uh, these uh, by uh, the our our carbon tax. Okay, what are the strengths of of this type of system, which is uh, carbon fee and dividend, or the Australian Climate Dividend Plan? So they're both market-based uh, systems relying on the strength of the free market system to find the best solutions. Well recognised as the best way to do it. They're technology neutral and do not rely on politicians and their supporters picking winners. So uh, yeah, history has shown that uh, politicians picking winners uh, just uh, doesn't, doesn't work as effectively as we'd like it to. So it directly charges for the social cost of greenhouse gas emissions. So it's trying to balance uh, a negative from a tax with a positive by the social good that uh, can come out of uh, fairly distributing the uh, revenue from that tax. The dividend again goes to the people who, uh, who need support uh, the most to reduce uh, inequality. And uh, the border adjustments mean businesses are not disadvantaged. And because there's a gradual, uh, proposed a gradual phase in for the change, uh, the impact on people uh, is uh, are not major. People won't notice it coming in. Uh, it, people won't notice the increases, but they will notice the, the uh, large amount of money that goes into their bank accounts. Okay. What's the actual output from the New South Wales model, uh, university modelling, what does it show? So, as I said before, every voting age Australia would receive approximately $1,300 per year in their bank account. So the uh, dividend plan 
uh, will leave more than three quarters of Australians better off financially. So most people will benefit significantly from this scheme. Lower income houses would uh, receive particularly large benefits to relative to their existing uh, incomes and expenditures. So the average Australian household is estimated to be almost $600 a year better off. And the lowest 20% of income uh, households in Australia will be around $1,300 a year better off. So uh, everyone likes money in their bank account. Uh, especially when it comes in regularly and the people uh, that are worst off will benefit from most of that having uh, a bit of, bit of extra cash coming in. So just uh, uh, the graphical version of what the, the uh, University of New South Wales uh, uh, Australian Climate Dividend Plan shows. So this the yellow uh, bars, are the uh, the household incomes for average Australian companies, uh, average Australian households going up to about $600 a year. And for the bottom 20% of households going up to almost $1,300 a year. And as I said, because it's a gradual implementation, uh, the impact will be quite small uh, and uh, people will be able to adjust to that. And the uh, extra income people will get will uh, make a significant benefit. So the question, who, uh, who would not be better off under a, an Australian climate dividend plan? So uh, people who have large amounts of air conditioning and heating in their homes without good insulation. So uh, they're likely to be worse off. People who retain uh, inefficient inter internal combustion transports for high kilometre private use uh, could be worse off. So most businesses can pass on uh, the increased cost to their customers. But if those businesses don't implement better energy efficiency and lower, renew and lower costs through renewable technologies, they're going to eventually lose out to, to competitors that do use those systems. And of course, anyone who's a massive consumer uh, is also likely to be worse off. Just some of the minor differences between uh, citizen climate, citizens' climate lobbies, carbon fee and dividend, and the uh, Australian Climate Dividend Plan. So basically both have the same goals, approach, uh, and, and only small differences. And both, basically both would have similar results. Uh, uh, the key difference that's um, uh, significantly important is the Australian Climate Dividend Plan has actually been modelled and costed for the Australia con Australian context. The Australian Climate Dividend Plan, uh, one of the key differences is that uh, the uh, uh, carbon fee and dividend has, has, has got no upper lim limit on uh, the uh, uh, cost of, of carbon, where the Australian Climate Dividend Plan puts a $50 Australian per tonne of carbon dioxide or equivalent. And as, as we've mentioned before, a $5 a year uh, increase from about $20 a tonne per year. So uh, it, it uh, increases slower, but, but, uh, but within six years uh, gets to a uh, quite a reasonable uh, number that will have a major impact on our economy and major impact on the use of uh, fossil fuels and, and generation of greenhouse gases. So the uh, dividend is paid to voting age people, uh, whereas in the carbon fee and dividend, uh, we also pay a reduced amount, of, amount for uh, children. So it's just a small difference. And the carbon fee and dividend uh, is proposed to be paid monthly, where uh, currently the Australian Climate Dividend Plan is proposed to be paid less often, though not, not well defined at the moment. Another major difference is that the Australia Climate Dividend Plan does not cover all emission sectors. So the three uh, sectors that are not covered is land use and forestry, uh, basically because that's a positive anyway, that's, that's uh, 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 actually absorbs carbon, di carbon dioxide, so it doesn't really need to be included. So the waste, which is 2%, and the agriculture sector, sec sector which is still reasonably significant, at 13.2%. So these, this emission pie graph comes from the most recent government figures that, that are published uh, every six months. 
So why agricultural waste and uh, uh, waste and, and land and forestry use is not, not included? So the key reason why uh, New South Wales Uni has missed out those three sectors it, or, or the, the two sectors I focused on is because of administrative cost overheads. So for our uh, electricity, stationary energy and transport, it's very easy to calculate how much tax should be applied and who it should be applied to, making it very efficient. So the ad, admin uh, for industrial processes and product use and future emissions is doable as there are only a small number of businesses that are affected. So it, it, it's not easy to cost, but it, it's not that many companies that, that really need to be focused on. So with the waste emissions, uh, it's considered small, only uh, a bit over 2% and highly focused on already and managed by a lot of councils and, and uh, a lot of things are happening on waste at the moment. The farming emissions are controversial, complex and uh, just not worth the effort uh, and probably be better dealt with in other ways. So uh, figuring out how much each cow is farting and, and burping uh, which is where most of the farming emissions come from, is, is as I said, controversial and, and uh, not, not easy to, to manage. So uh, what are the competing greenhouse reduction plans and policies? So we've got renewable energy targets and subsidies. And uh, as I said, this requires uh, politicians and, and others picking winners which uh, history shows that uh, it's not necessarily the be uh, best way to do it. Uh, the other issue, this, uh, the me mechanism that's been uh, talked about uh, a lot over the last few years is the National Energy Guarantee. So it's very messy, regulation based, based but only focuses on the electricity sector, so not terribly effective. Uh, the Gillard tax scheme was, uh, was probably very effective until it got killed, but it misses key sectors like transport, uh, there was high high number of exemptions and a lot of admin uh, running it. So one of the other systems that are, are talked about regularly is cap and trade systems, but uh, it's uh, well understood that they're messy and complex and uh, not necessarily the best way to, uh, to, to do it. The current Liberal National Governments have a direct action system it also requires picking winners. It's messy and, and well recognised as inefficient to uh, solve our climate issues. So one of the things uh, Citizens Climate Lobby tries to do is sell uh, solutions to politicians. So two categories of uh, uh, politicians are, are left-wing thinkers and right-wing thinkers. So to sell new ideas to people, you really, really need their values and the, and the ideas that they hold close to their hearts. So uh, left of the thinkers, uh, some of the values that, uh, that kind of uh, this sort of proposal could be connected to is reducing inequality, as we've mentioned, uh, higher taxes on the wealthy, uh, because uh, high energy users uh, tend to be uh, wealthier, uh, wealthier and creating new and better systems. Uh, Left-wing people like creating new, new, new good systems. So some of the ideas that connect with uh, left-wing thinkers are equality, fairness, fraternity, rights, progress, reform and internationalism. So uh, and as suggested is one way to think about this is through the Robin Hood type carbon tax. Uh, focusing on, on left wing's uh, desire to have equity and fairness. Okay, selling uh, where the real challenge is, is, is selling uh, carbon tax ideas to right wing thinkers. So the values that we can connect to with right wing people that, that may be useful to us uh, on selling a carbon tax is re less regulation on business, reduce government size and spending, Willingness to in, in, uh, their willingness to balance environmental harm against economic good. So some of the ideas they hold close to, to, to their hearts is order, individual responsibility, morality and nationalism. 
And so uh, my way of thinking of uh, a possible uh, a route into that sort of uh, connection is uh, focusing on individual responsibility. If an, individual, if an ind individual can reduce their carbon footprint, uh, they can grow their dividend return uh, associated with this. So focusing on individual responsibility, and as uh, uh, Scott Morrison said, is uh, uh, I can't remember what the terminology is now, but uh, 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 people who make the effort effectively get, get the return, which is a way to connect to right-wing people. Okay, uh, thank you. So I've, I've tried to cover just a brief overview of what I think the uh, Australian Climate Dividend Plan covers. Uh, so I'm open to questions. Great, thank you, Peter. That was a, um, a really good summary and a nice way of um, getting to, to grips with some of the, the, the detail of the, uh, of the plan. Um,